Welcome to my life. I'm Terry Stiles, and this is part two with Marilyn Benner. Marilyn is my time capsule too because I've known her since I came to Oxford and um, because I knew that we were going to do this I've been reliving the last 30 years oh, of my yeah. life it's been fun oh, and I really appreciate good. that so we ended off our last program talking about the time capsule the time capsule is now in one of the walls in DA mm -hmm. and you know who's going to get on this is CJ Carnacchio. <laughs> oh. He's going to start doing some research as soon as he figures this out. He may know about this, but um, you really are a historian for the oh. school, which is really neat. And, and a historian mm -hmm. for Oxford. Not only did you grow up here, your kids grow up, grew up in the same house that you did. Mm -hmm. You have worked in the schools for, you said, 43 43. years. Mm -hmm. I was thinking 38. So you know the history of our schools. You've also been involved on the planning commission for the village. The zoning board of appeals. The zoning board. We also, I think we met when there was a little road committee that we were sticking up for Gillespie mm -hmm. <laughs> because um, it was starting to get a little busy, I guess in the 90s on Gillespie. You've seen a lot happen mm -hmm. on this road. I can remember as a child, my sister who lives in California and I would sit out in the front next to the street and wish a car would go by <laughs> because we played a game that she would get the first car and then I would get the second and whatever car looked better than the other one <laughs> that was going to be was your a game. car <laughs> yeah it was a game oh how and, funny and we, I mean we'd wish and wish a car of course North Oxford Road was dirt at that time yeah so we didn't have the traffic there was no school up there no Myers no, yeah, Meyer. I remember when Myers came in, we lived on Gillespie as well, and my mom would call and say, you know, I told all my friends to go up Gillespie to go to Myers because it's a lot easier. And I'm like, Mom, no, I can't get out of my driveway. That's right. And that was before the, the school, the middle school came in there. And so what school were you working at when they built the middle school up on the hill? Were you over? Um, um, I think I was. Let's see, that one must have been in the late nineties. I was yeah. either at Daniel Axford or at Lakeville Elementary. Lakeville. Did you mm. ever work at what was the high school? No. You never worked in that building. Mm. So you've worked at D. You worked at Washington Street D. A. The middle right. school and then the high school when it was the high school, right? Right. So how many years were you at the middle school? Um, I must have been there three or four. And were you the secretary at that time? No, I wasn't at that time. Like I said, I worked with um, Bud Raleigh and um, Nancy Kubish. And there was a Joanne. Joanne was the secretary, right? Wasn't um, her name Joanne? After Carol, 91. Carolyn Leaders was oh, there. Carolyn. Yeah, it was a Carolyn Leaders. Hmm. Are, we, are we talking about the 90s? Yeah, so it would have been like 93, I think, because she, she and I worked oh, together. She could, have, she could have started after Carolyn Leaders. Maybe, mm -hmm. yeah. And so then you retired, right? No, not yet. <laughs> I was, like I said, secretary at Daniel Axford, and then, um, of course, they worked on building the new addition on and I mm -hmm. went back. Oh, really? And Mrs. McGuire worked with me. I want to mention her oh, because yeah. mm -hmm. uh, she and I worked together for 17 years. Oh my gosh, yeah. And um, Mrs. Engel came in to replace Mr. Best. Uh, I and, didn't know her. <laughs> yeah, Lydia Engel. And she was there a couple of years when they decided to divide Daniel Axford because we were the largest elementary. And what um, other element? There was Daniel Axford, Clear, Clear, Clear Lake, and Leonard. And Leonard Elementary. Mm -hmm. Wow. And DA was larger than oh. Clear Lake. Oh, yes. Much really? larger. Yeah. Wow. And that was all just village children, right? No, it took in Oxford Lakes. Oh, that's true. Well, that's yeah. village. They're mm -hmm. in the village, too. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. Wow. So, um, they decided to, they built the junior high out there, and they decided to have Lakeville become an elementary, elementary. school. Mm. 
Well, I debated on staying at Daniel Axford or going to Lakeville, but so many of the parapros that I was friends with and family members that had children in the school were going to go to the new uh, Lakeville Elementary. So I decided to leave Daniel Axford and go to Lakeville. Oh, that must have been hard. You had been a DA for a long time yeah, at that point. It was hard. Wow. But it was because of the people that were you were working with that I was mm -hmm. working with and mm -hmm. that the parents of students that would be going out there. Because I met an awful lot of nice parents all the time that I worked in the elementary in particular. And um, you sure did. So I went to Lakeville Elementary. I was there for five years. And um, Mrs. McGuire and I both decided that we would retire together. So I retired and I traveled some with my husband because my daughter was a traveling nurse and she was working in California and we wanted to go and visit her and my grandchildren. So I'm so glad that I did do that because I had time with not only my husband but my daughter and I lost my daughter a matter of a couple of years later um, and then of course later my husband. So I'm glad I had that time. Yeah, that was kind of like boom, boom, wasn't it? Yes. Mm -hmm. Sherry came back here because she because she found out Tom cancer. was sick, right? Mm -hmm. And she was gonna she was living here, right? Right. right. And the the kids came she back. She was only too. here. She was only here about nine months. Yeah, not long. She passed away suddenly. And the kids came back too. You right. have two grandchildren. Yes grandson and granddaughter. Mm -hmm. um, Both Sherry's children. Right. And so... Um, they were... How old were they at that time? Were they in, in their, their teens? teens. Yeah. yeah, they were in their teens. And um, so then I'm, I'm not a person that want to just sit around at home and watch TV. So I thought, well, maybe I'll start subbing again because I like being out around people and um, felt like maybe I still could, could be involved in the schools. So I signed up as a sub, and they had me sub quite often at the high school, which I had never worked at the high school before. Um, <laughs> Whole different world. <laughs> it was. And well, that was when the high school was up here, up at, here. on the hill. Yes. Right. So they changed. They, for those of you that maybe are new to Oxford, they had a junior high up on the hill, brand new. And um, after a couple years, it wasn't long. Right. But Oxford began bursting at the seams. Every one of the schools <laughs> really were bursting, and they turned the high school, or excuse me, the junior high into the high school and they had to expand it too, right? Right. And, and they expanded it when it was the high school or before they made it the high school. I don't remember how that went. I'm not sure either. I think they expanded it in order for it to be a high school. And so we're going to talk about your high school career okay. um, in a minute. We're going to come back in probably 30 seconds. We'll be right back. What if we didn't have local TV and radio? Where would I go for local sports, local politics, a mayor, city council, stuff that affects me every day? How about health? Who's covering things that endanger my family? I need to know now, as it happens, from sources I trust, people in my community. No agenda, no bias like you find on cable and social media, just facts. For news I can trust, I stay local. Support your local station.
Welcome back to my life. I'm Terry Stiles, and I'm still with Marilyn Benner, and I could stay here forever, <laughs> even without your pie. Marilyn makes the best pie, believe me. <laughs> so we were talking a little bit about the high school. Marilyn had not been to the high school yet, but she actually ended your career this year at the high school, and they actually have a Marilyn Benner Day. Um, but so what precipitated you moving to the high school? Well, I... Um this I got calls to sub at the high school, more than I, more frequent than I did the elementaries. Um, I did sub some at Daniel Axford again and, and Lakeville, but it was more at the high school. And um, they had me doing the attendance a lot. I worked in the front office, so I also helped the students and the parents that came in and answered the phone, but I did the attendance for the students. So one day, Paul McDivitt, who was the assistant principal at the time. Um, and now the principal at uh, Leonard, Leonard, right? Now the principal yeah. at Leonard, yes. Mm -hmm. he, uh, he asked me if I'd be interested in, in working, that they had a four hour a day position coming up. And um, it was things that I had been doing, the attendance and working in the front office. So I said, um, Yes, and I thought I would. And four um, hours is is a nice, yeah, easy day, right? right. <laughs> it was. And um, so I applied for the position, and I met uh, with the human resource director, and um, she interviewed me. And of course, they knew my work record, and they sure. had all of that. Yeah. And um, so I got the position, and and I worked there. Um, for 12 years. Wow, that. that's amazing. That was 12 years. Mm -hmm. So you've seen a lot of um, supervisors come and go, but a lot of them stay right like you did within the community. What is it about the Oxford School District, I think, that makes it so special, do you think? Well, I think for a long time it was because it was small town. People knew one another. Mm -hmm. um, I know when I graduated from high school, um, there was only 84 students in our class. Oh my goodness, and really, wow. And now there's, if all of the kids that are doing remote as well as attending face-to-face -face at the high school, it'd be about 1,800. Wow. So it's a That's big difference. That's amazing, yeah. 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 But we've had some wonderful people to work with. I was gonna say, Mr. Um, Schwag was the principal oh, at the high school uh -huh. when I started, as was... Oh, really? Yes. Okay. Yes, huh. as was Paul McDivitt. Now, Mr. Schwag retired, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. and, and Paul has moved on. Then you worked for Mr. Wilson, right? Wasn't he a principal there? No. What was no, his name? No, it was name? Mr. Dunkley. Dunkley. That's Mr. Dunkley. I, I worked know, with him. I always him. want to call him Wilson. Oh, I don't know yeah. why that is. And Mr. Noose is still there. And oh, yeah. actually, before um, I retired, I counted out that I had worked for, which newspaper had this in, that I worked for 17 different principals. Wow. In my lifetime. Wow. And it That's was at least seven superintendents. And, but I want to mention, too, that Tim Throne is an excellent superintendent. Yeah. Um, a very kind man very knowledgeable and he's very special to me. He's a good guy. Yes, he is. Um, he's, he's invested in the community. Mm -hmm. I know that his kids went to school here. He listens when you talk to him. Yes, he you does. You know, he's very present. Yes, I, yes. I really like him. We've had good luck with Tim. There's been, you know, different superintendents that were remote. Mm -hmm. um, yes. Compared to Tim, and he's yes. not. No, he's not. What was your favorite school to work at? Daniel Axford. Was it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That was yeah. a nice school. That, I call that my Camelot years. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, what is it about Oxford that makes Oxford so special to you, Marilyn? Besides being the place you grew up. Yeah. And, and I grew up in Lake Orion, and Oxford's my home. Yeah. I, yeah get teary-eyed when I think Well, I've about lived Oxford. here so long, seen a lot of changes. I know a lot of people. Um, and I tell my sister who lives in California, who lives in a city, 
that she's a city mouse and I'm the country <laughs> mouse. <laughs> yeah. Um, and she she seems to think everybody knows everybody's business, but I see it as um, a little past history here. My daughter, when she was only eight, was bitten by a stray dog, mm. and. Um, she had to go through the rabies shots. Oh my gosh. We had to end up chaining the dog up on our property because that's what they recommend that you keep watch on it yourself. For 10 days. Yeah, you, and they tend for 10 days. And I can't tell you the people around town that came by to offer something. Our television wasn't working. One of the ladies offered her TV to us oh so goodness. that Sherry would have a TV. The local police department came by to check on her to see how she was doing, wow. and people brought food. It, it, that's nothing that my sister in California could ever have. Yeah, yeah. and I I just like the small town. Yeah, I mean I know Oxford has grown, but mm -hmm. it still has kind of a flavor of. A small well, and town. you still pretty much have the same neighbors that you've had for the last twenty years. Sure, it's it's changed, but it's not changing people that much right and the people that are coming into oxford i feel are the people that want the same thing you want you know mm -hmm. they want that small town feel and they get to know who you are immediately and they let you know who they are immediately it's just a different i, I it's just right. a special place there's no yeah. doubt about it what were some of your favorite memories growing up um well i guess i would have to say probably um, I always liked, uh, as far as for Oxford, I always liked their parades downtown. Oh, yeah. um, I was involved in one of them years ago, and um, it just seemed to me like um, Oxford would have special events. We used to have carnivals south of town uh, at that yeah. time. And um, there's just so many things, Terry. It's hard to. Yeah, so pick out Pioneer one Days it turned, evolved into. Um, I think it was uh, um, Beamer. Did you know Brace Beamer? Yes. Mm -hmm. You did, huh? Mm -hmm. You remember yeah. him? Yeah. And, yeah. and he had a son that might have been around your age, right? No, I think he was older than Somebody is older than me. One of them. Oh. Because <laughs> nice I know. know that he's, his son, I guess, is a, well, maybe his son, his grandson's probably your age. Could be. Yeah. Could be. Huh. Yeah, the Oxford's seen a lot of history. Mm -hmm. And so. Talk a little bit about being involved in the community. I always envied you that you were able to stay remote from being involved with the village, and then you got involved in the also. planning commission, right? Mm -hmm. How did that happen? Um, was that? I, I don't know if it was Susan Bizzardi. Somebody asked me about what I like to serve, and um, of course, it was after my husband had passed away and was no longer on village council, and. Um, Jack, Jack Curtis was on there with me and um, always giving me a hard time about not wearing boots. <laughs> and, uh, uh, so there was a lot of nice people that were on there. And of course, I've always been concerned about the village. And when my husband was on, he would tell me things. And, well, we're gonna so. talk about that when we come back. <laughs> Don't go away, we'll be right back.
Welcome back to my life. I'm Terry Stiles and I'm with Marilyn Benner, one of my favorite people in Oxford. In fact, I think you're the first person. So when we first moved back from California in 81, we lived on the other side of town um, oh. and met Charlie Gerard. Okay. And we knew him. My sister lived in Oxford, but when we finally bought in Oxford in 86, we were right down the street from you, and you and Tom are the first people that we met in this neighborhood. Is that right? And I think you, we were walking down here, Don parked his truck down here, and you came out and talked and just made us feel so welcome. Oh. And so I have a soft spot in my heart <laughs> for you too. Oh. I know you want to mention a, a principal that you worked with at Lakeville, but I also want to talk about you and Tom. Okay. Um, but the principal was special to you. She yes, um, Sharon Karpinski. Oh, she yeah. um, she was just a fun, neat, personable t principal, and uh, we all enjoyed. We were um, always looking for fun things to do and come up with. And uh, she was she was businesslike too. I mean, she she ran a tight ship, and we uh, but we we just really enjoyed her. So I wanted to mention Sharon Karpinski. That was something, um, so my kids went through the entire school system, and that was something I always found. Um, if I had to go into any one of the offices, of course it was really nice to see you when I'd go into DA, I knew who you were, but um, there was always this welcoming atmosphere. Um, like. We knew who, we knew everybody and who everybody was and it was just a lovely place to raise my kids, that's for sure. And Tom, you and Tom made us feel so welcome. Tom got me involved in the village and I always saw you stand back and say, no, but, and I don't know, <laughs> Tom was on the council, mm -hmm. then he was off and I know that he was really tempted to go back on again. I know that you were trying <laughs> to talk him out of it. Um, but. You did get involved. And let's talk about you and Tom. You guys were married for how long? 51 let's years. Let's honor Tom for a minute. Mm -hmm. He was such a good guy. Mm -hmm. Such a good dad. Such a good husband. He never, ever missed talking about how much he adored you. Oh. I spent a lot of hours with him on council, and boy, whenever we would bring up Marilyn, he was so proud of you, who oh, you were. He was oh, a, nice. He adored you, and that was really oh. a good example for us for sure mm -hmm. but then you got involved <laughs> yeah. what made you get involved I don't know if Susan Bizzardi suggested it to me uh, somebody on council may have uh, Rose Bema oh yeah and mm -hmm. um, and so I thought well you know maybe I'll give local government a chance and uh, so I served for a while on on both the Planning Commission and the Zoning Board of Appeals did it give you a different understanding of your village? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Mm -hmm. I think the people that are on the village council and, and planning commission and zoning board of appeals uh, deserve a lot more credit than they get for doing that. It's what, what do you think made Tom stay so involved? I mean, he, he just really was interested in it. I, I, um, I wouldn't have years ago have thought he would be, but, but he was. He was interested in what was going on locally and and what the council could could do for the community, for the people. Cared about your neighbors. And mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's talk a little bit about Alan. Let's talk about your kids. Okay. I, I know you miss Sherry terrib terribly, and that was a tough loss. And you, have, yeah. you have Alan mm -hmm. living here, right? Alan's yes. here. Mm -hmm. What's he doing? Yes. Uh, he works for a company in Lapeer. And um, he's a very good son to me. Helps me do a lot of things around the house that I, uh, I need help with. And um, Sherry was a registered nurse. She was a traveling nurse. For a while she talked about being a nurse that goes out with helicopters to people. <gasps> And she was interested in that. Was she always interested in medicine, like when she was a little girl? Like she did was. It, it didn't surprise yeah, you? Yeah, things that she could see or do would have bothered me, but it didn't seem to bother her at all. So. Where did she go to school? She went to Hurley Hospital. Oh, did um, she? Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And wow. Um, she'd already got some of her schooling in. And I give her a lot of credit because she had two children at the time. Two young children and still 
put herself through school. Wow. Was she living in Oxford when she went to Hurley? Yes. So she was driving back and forth mm -hmm. besides and had the kids. Right, right. Wow. Was she working as well? No, but she did work a while for the Oxford Fire Department. It was oh. like an EMT. She helped out there. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh. Mm -hmm. So how long did she stay here then until she went on the road, so to speak, became um, a traveling nurse? Boy, I'm not sure on that. What made her do that? Uh, it was something she was interested in. She wanted to something. travel some and see some. And so she found out her dad had cancer and then she wanted to be back here. Well, I know she was in California for a while. What other states did she work I was in? mainly California. Oh. Yeah. Did mm -hmm. she get to choose where she was going or did they just say pack your bags? No, they would, they would call and tell her where they had a position open. And, and she, could she had a choice. But of course, California uh -huh. being such a large state, mm -hmm. they needed her more than... So and was she others. able to see your sister? What were they yes. close? Mm -hmm. they, oh, yep, okay. yep, she did. Oh, that's good. Um, so, and now her kids are—they've got to be in their twenties. My grandson is a um, works at the Rochester Chap House. And really? Yeah. Uh huh. He's been there quite a few years. And my granddaughter um, recently was working up at the T Nails. Um, and she's learning to want to be a nail technician. And so, so they, I should be able to get my nails done. Oh yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Give me your card. Yeah. Um, they both live around here? Or no? Yes. Well, my grandson doesn't. He lives, I um, can't think of the name of the Around county. Rochester. He just moved oh. over there, but oh. he's south of Rochester. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. Mm. So you, do you get free dinners at the Chop House? <laughs> I have. Have you? <laughs> That's yeah. a good place to he's go. He's treated me. Too. <laughs> So right. now that you're retired, Marilyn, what are mm -hmm. you doing? Are you busy all the time? Well, Most people are, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. there's a lot of things around home, especially with it being winter, that I want to do. I have gone up north. I have a, a wonderful cousin, and I go up there to his property periodically. And I've been ice fishing even <laughs> at my age to go really? out ice fishing. But Did you love I, it? Yeah, I enjoyed it. Is it, it going to be your yeah. new hobby? <laughs> Well, I don't know about that, but um, I'm looking forward to the summer of doing things mm -hmm. outside. Of sure. Course, like right. A lot of, and um, who knows? I something may come along that I may decide to have another job. I know, I know. it's hard to keep you yeah. down. Mm -hmm. And so we'll talk just a little bit about the Marilyn Benner Day. Are they going to do that every year? So the school no. decided. <laughs> no. What date was it? It was January 5th, which is the last day that I, I worked for the school. Marilyn Benner yeah. Day. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I, miss the, I miss the staff and I miss the students, of course. And um, even helpful parents that come in. And How was it um, dealing with the COVID thing? Well, uh, that kept us busier for sure. Um, and um, but we never seemed to have any any issues. The district put plexiglass up in front of us, and of course we wore masks. Right. And um, so it was. I know that Tim was very very careful with how they handled oh, COVID. Oh yes, for sure. And I appreciate sure. that, and I'm sure a lot of parents do. Yes. Yes. Marilyn, it's mm -hmm. been wonderful to see you again. <laughs> and you too, Terry. And thank you for and, uh, doing this. And I want to say that my mother raised a fuss when my uncles were going to move back to Detroit because she wanted to stay in Oxford. And I'm so glad that my mother did raise a fuss because I have loved work living in Oxford um, and I wouldn't have had the opportunity to work 43 years for a school district that's been as good to me as the Oxford School District has. And for my husband to be on village council and be involved in the local government has been wonderful too. Oxford's been lucky to have you here. Mm, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for doing this with us. I really appreciate it. <laughs> okay. And thank you.